Autolite and its 98,000 dealers bring you Mr. Tyrone Power in tonight's presentation of Suspense. Tonight, Autolite presents the story of a man who found that everything was against him. His wife distrusted him, his best friend had to give him an alibi, all because of a girl, a dead girl. Our story is called The Guilty Always Run. Our star, Mr. Tyrone Power. $100,000. That's the huge total to be given away in cash through the Autolite family charity drawing. If you're one of 25 persons selected, you will name your favorite church, club, hospital, or other recognized charity to share a total of $100,000. And now, it's our privilege to hear what Fleet Admiral William F. Halsey, campaign chairman of the Mental Health Fund, says about this great opportunity. Money, such as that being offered in this Autolite family charity drawing, can do much to aid the research which will not only help cure but prevent mental illness. If you are selected, I urge you to remember the vital work of the Mental Health Fund. You can enter this drawing by just signing your name and address on a registration form at any or all of these Autolite family car dealers. DeSoto, Hudson, Plymouth, Studebaker, Dodge, Willis, Nash, Packard, Kaiser, or Chrysler. Help your favorite local or national charity share in $100,000. Sign up tomorrow. And now, Autolite presents transcribed The Guilty Always Run, starring Mr. Tyrone Power, hoping once again to keep you in suspense. To leave me alone all evening like that. It's way after 12. And... Listen, you told me it was all right. You told me to go. Answer the phone, will you? Okay. Or do you expect me to leap across the room okay, and... Okay, okay. Hello. Hello? 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 Anybody there? Well? Nobody there. What's the matter? I thought I heard something. Hello? Hello? Hello, hello? Somebody playing a joke, Jeff? I guess so. Karen? Uh, don't start anything, Janie, huh? Was it Karen? Janie, baby. Janie. What? Listen. Sure. Sure, sweetie. What do you want me to listen to? It's not my fault you've got your hip in a cast. It's not your fault I've got my hip in a cast, dear. Oh, cut it out, will you? I'm clumsy. I go along on vacations to the beach and fall off a surfboard and break my hip and my husband meets another... Are you going to answer the phone? Uh Uh-uh. No. Bring the phone over to me, Jeff. Let me answer it. Sure. Here. Hello? Hello? What's the matter? You tell me. I asked you a question. What's the... Here, you take the phone. Hello? (laughs) Who is this? Hello? Help me. Help me, Jeff. Yes, this is... Jeff. This is Jeff. Who... Hello. Hello, hello. Well, whoever it was hung up, Janie. Who was it, Jeff? I don't know. Was it Karen? Now, why don't you cut that out? It was a girl. Was it Karen? Karen sounded like she needed help. Loaded, probably. What does she look like? You never told me. Very tanned, very tall. And very beautiful. She really is. Calling here after midnight. Doesn't she know you're married? Didn't you tell her? I told her. You better go see if she's all right. Now, listen. Karen... You'd better go see... Yeah. The 
drive was eight miles from Zuma Beach. Nearly two in the morning and a full moon and a few clouds and phosphorescence riding the lip of the surf. No one was home at Karen Lawrence's house. Her white convertible wasn't there either. I went home. Janie was sleeping, so I waited till morning to tell her. Then I went out on the beach and started to work on the surfboards with Lou, a friend of mine who'd taken the place next door. You know how I'd raise this, Dent? How? Put a beer bottle cap on it and then set a hot iron on the cap. The dent will pop right up. Yeah, I might try it when... Hi. Oh, hello there. Ah, oh, hello. I'm Phyllis George. Which one of you is Jeff? Not Lou, huh? Jeff. <laughs> it's always Jeff. Me. What did you do with Karen? What are you talking about? I drove out to see her. We were going shopping today. She's not home. The inside of her house is a wreck. Why ask me? She told me yesterday she was going to load up her surfboard and try to trap you into some moonlight surfing. How did she make out? She made out good. Yeah, we went surfing. Where's Karen, Sonny? All right, baby. I'm going to the cops. We finished resurfacing the boards after that. Not much talk. I kept looking down the road for the cops that girl promised. No cops. After a while, I said to Lou, see ya, and went back to Janie. Carried her out to the strand of white beach we bought for the summer. Oiled her back and her shoulders and her arms and then her face. Then lay down and set the ball of sun spinning. And that's how a day got done. Around ten that night, the moon was low but gaining altitude fast. Jeff? Yeah, honey? It's a beautiful night out there. Very beautiful. Uh Uh-huh. No sense you sitting around listening to the radio. Why don't you take the board, go surfing in the moonlight? No, no, Janie, I... Listen to me, sweetie. If I could, I'd go with you. There's nothing right now I want more to do. So you go, huh, sweetie? Don't let me ruin all of it for you. Oh, Janie, I don't mind... You go, take the board and go, because I asked you to. Because I want you to. I went. And the waves were coming in gentle and fast and moon-crested from about 150 yards offshore. I paddled the board out, easy and slow, to where the moon was shaping them. It's where I saw her. Karen. Her hair floating and woven in a web of kelp. And her face moon white. And her lips and splotches of color on her throat where the bruises were. Karen in the wet shroud of a silk dress. Dead Karen. In the sodden jacket I'd lent her the night before. When I got back to the house, Janie was asleep. I didn't wake her. I got into some clothes, went out to the car. Hey, wait a minute. Is that you, Jeff? Yeah, it's me, Lou. Lou, come out here a minute, will you? Uh, Sure. I couldn't sleep. I was reading. I heard the car, and I thought maybe... Something I want to tell you about last night, Lou. Something you don't know. All I know about last night is that you and Karen went surfing by moonlight this morning. A girl named Phyllis rode up and yelled, cop in your face, because no more beautiful Karen. (laughs) After that, I lose you. Just listen to me, huh? Well, I'm listening, Jeff. Well, like you said, I went surfing with her. After that, she needled me into taking her to that joint down the highway for a beer. That's been done. A beautiful girl sometimes merits a beer. Ah, Janie doesn't know about it, huh? That's what you're trying to say? And something else. All right, something else. It was while we were in the joint... She, well, you know Karen, you'd know what she... Yeah, if only you better than I. Is that what you did, Jeff? I had to walk out on her. She followed me out. I told her off. Put her in her car and told her off for the rest of time. Marriage, I said to her. Happily married. And a couple of other things I said. She cried, then she drove off. I walked the beach for a long time. Jeff. It's the last I saw her, Lou, I swear it. I swear it. What's eating on you, kid? A little while ago, I found her. Floating in a kelp bed, dead. I think murdered. Where were you going just now, Jeff? 
To the police. Jeff. Yeah? Police is where grief is. What? You told Karen off, you said, and never saw her again. You swore it when I didn't even know what you were talking about. But don't you believe me? Don't... Police is where grief is. Police and Karen murdered can burst wide open what you got with Janie. Hey, you forgot a thing, Jeff. What? You didn't walk a lonesome beach last night. You left Karen and you came to my house. We sanded the surfboards. Isn't that what you forgot? Lou. From me to you, an alibi. An alibi maybe you don't need, but from me to you. Because of what you and Janie mean to me. Because of what he said. Because it was a big grief. Because it might kill what it was Janie and I had together. A summer and beach and sky and sea and a love I had for her. I waited till Lou had gone back into his house. Then I swam out to where Karen was. I took off her the jacket I'd lent her the night before. I swam back to shore and found a littered strand of beach and burned the jacket. And buried the scorched rags. And I went home and slept. And it was Janie who woke me. Jeff. Jeff, there's a fellow outside. Huh? Huh? A fellow. Outside. Wants to talk to you. Who? A Mr. Anders. A policeman. Look, Janie. No matter what. That phone call last night. From Karen? That phone call? No matter what, don't say anything about it. Nothing. A fellow's waiting at the door for you, Jeff. No matter what, do you hear? No matter... You want to see me? You, Jeff Marlowe? That's right. Swimmer found a girl out in the kelp this morning. Girl we all know around here. Karen Lawrence. Well, what's that got to do with me? She was murdered, Mr. Marlowe. Strangled. Somebody killed her and put her out on the tide. Let's go inside and talk about it. Autolite is bringing you Mr. Tyrone Power with Kathy Lewis and William Conrad in The Guilty Always Run, tonight's presentation in radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. Hey, Marty, what's the rush? Oh, hi, Harlow. I can't stop now. I'm coming from a preview of the new 54 Kaiser, and I've got to get over to the paper and write the story. Hey, they call it the new car with the big change, don't they? Right. There's a big change in styling, front, back, and inside. And there's more room and comfort than ever before. Man, the new Kaiser is luxurious. How about the new Kaiser's power? Oh, there's a big change there, too, with new superpower. The Kaiser has a revolutionary new engine that gives you power on demand. It's like having two engines in one. For normal driving, you get Kaiser's famous economy. But when you need an extra burst of power and pickup for passing, or for zooming up hills, you get it. On demand. Well, that sounds exciting, Marty. And tonight we are privileged to salute Kaiser as an outstanding member of our Autolite family. Autolite is proud of its long association with Kaiser and Kaiser dealers everywhere. And now, Autolite brings back to our Hollywood soundstage Mr. Tyrone Power in Elliot Lewis's production of The Guilty Always Run, a tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. Karen Lawrence, Mr. Marlowe. How come she's dead? I don't know. Jeff? Oh, it's nothing, Janie. This gentleman just wants to know if I know Karen Lawrence. Why does the gentleman want to know that, Jeff? Well... Why do you want to know that? She's dead. That's not the question I asked you. She was murdered. That's still not the question. Asking around about her, your husband's name gets mentioned more than anybody else's. I see. And she was murdered, all right, in case you've got any doubt about it. Strangled. Bruise marks here and here. Two thumbs, you know. Wearing all her clothes. Good swimmer, I understand, so we've got a tab at murder. And I've got to ask, Mr. Marlowe, if you killed her. No, sir, I did not. 
But you know her. Oh, yes, sir. Now, look, you don't have to yes, sir, or no, sir, me. Okay. Uh, you were with her last night. We got that from Phyllis George, a friend of hers. Well, look, this is what happened. One day, Karen comes up from Malibu with a board and pretty helpless about getting it from her car to the surf. Yeah, when was this? Mm, ten days ago. Eleven. 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 The afternoon of the morning I broke my hip. Well, I can pick it all up till yesterday, Marlowe. Uh, Talk has it she liked you. Did Talk have it I tried to ignore her? Yes, it did. Did Talk have it that right off I told her I was married? Yes, and... yes, it did. I also checked next door your friend Lou Foster. He says he was with you around the time the girl was probably killed. Then what are you coming around here for? And... What about the bar? Bar on the coast highway near Topanga Canyon, Marlowe. Barkeep said okay, that you were... Okay, okay. Like a fool, I took her down there for a beer night before last. Night before last is when she was killed. To talk it out, to tell her to stay away. Look, maybe to you it sounds... Now don't like... get yourself excited, Marlowe. That's just what I do. Dame was chasing me, didn't want her to. Take her some quiet place and talk to her. Adult, over a beer. Well, I hope your hip gets better, Mrs. Marlowe. Thanks. And thank you for your courtesy, both of you. Sure. Jeff? Yeah? You didn't tell me you took her for a drink. Just for a beer. Oh. Now look, Janie. To tell her not to love you anymore, Jeff? What's been going on, anyhow? Hello? Mr. Marlowe? That's right. Who's this? Norm. Norm? Yeah, Norm Sloan, Mr. Marlowe. I got the Topanga Innery on the Coast Highway. You've been in here. In fact, night before last, you were in here with Karen Lawrence. I understand from the police that Karen... What do you want? I can't talk to you over the phone, Mr. Marlowe, but I wish you'd stop in here any time in the next half hour or so. If I were in your shoes, I would, Mr. Marlowe. Bye. Who was it? Nobody. Who was it, Jeff? Nobody. I'm going out. Hey, you don't want to hear my troubles, Mr. Marlowe, so I'll just tell you this. I didn't tell that policeman about the argument you and that girl had in here. Since you were the only ones in here, then I'm the only one who knows about it. And what happened out front when you left? How she was carrying on and crying. And from what Mr. Anders, that policeman, said, she must have been murdered a couple hours after you left here with her. Now, uh, look, I don't know what you told the police, but you came down when I called Mr. Marlowe, so what am I to figure? As long as you're here, Mr. Marlowe... I'd like to know what it feels like to go out to Santa Anita with a thousand dollars and not care if I win or lose. With a thousand dollars, Mr. Marlowe. Today, Mr. Marlowe. A thousand? For what, Jeff? For what I need. To buy off a murder charge. Are you crazy, kid? You got it, Lou. You're going to give it to me? You're crazy? How deep into it can you get? A thousand now, a thousand a week maybe for the rest of your life, and You're then You're not you... going to do it, huh? You're not going to give it to me. Who are you buying from, Jeff? Sloan. Runs the beer joint on the highway. He saw me and Karen outside his... A thousand, huh? He must have seen a lot. You'll get it back, Lou. Every nickel. All right, Jeff. Drive me to my bank. And Jeff... Thanks. Thanks. That's not what I meant. This is what I meant. This'll do it, Jeff. It's as far as I can go. So luck and a long life, kid. We just stared at each other for a while. Then I had to lift his hand from his side to shake it. And no more talk. I drove him to his bank. Lou got the money. He gave it to me. I drove him to his house and then went to Sloan's joint. Bought a bottle of beer. Drank half of it. Paid him $1,000 for it. Sloan laughed from deep in his stomach. <laughs> Hello? 
Hi, honey. Who is this? Uh, I'm I'm sorry, there's no one here. But... <laughs> honey, baby, it's Jeff. Uh, no. No, th- there's no one here by that... Jeff, listen. The police are here. They... What? What are you... That you, Marlowe? This is Anders Marlowe, sheriff's office. Now, listen. Sloan, that beer joint fella, he called the office a little while ago, said you offered him $100 to keep his mouth shut. A hundred? Now, you come in, Marlowe, because when you did that, you practically signed a confession. Marlowe, you understand what's happening? let the receiver hang and let him talk into nothing, and I ran. Off the coast highway, down the beach. A couple of miles farther to Santa Monica Pier, farther to Ocean Park. Me, wanted for murder. Because Karen, dead Karen, wanted a part of my life, and I wouldn't give it to her. Because her girlfriend stuck her face into mine and yelled, Cop! Girlfriend, Phyllis George... I found her address in the Venice phone book. I went there. Rooming house overlooking one of the phony canals they have. Second floor rear. Phyllis. Scared. Staring. Holding it in. You just get out, you hear? Just keep away from me. You gotta help me, understand? Things you know about Karen. Fellas she knew. One fella, maybe, who wanted her dead. You. You did it. Nobody wanted her dead. Help me. Help me. What was it you had with Karen? It makes you choke her and kill her and throw her out into the ocean like she was... I didn't. I didn't kill her. You get out of here, huh? Because you scare me. Because you scare... Just listen, huh? Anything you know about her that I can take to the cops... Keep away. Keep away. Kill her. Kill her. Kill... Shut up. Shut up. Like Karen, huh? That's how you choke... That's what you did to her, killer? That? Like you wanted to do to me just now? No, no, I don't. (laughs) Don't. Don't do... This is Jeff. Where are you, kid? Listen. How's Janie? I didn't call her because the line's probably tapped or something. How's Janie, Lou? She's okay. Where are you? I I want you to meet me, Lou. Tell me how things are going. How... I gotta talk to somebody. Sure. Where are you? Phone booth outside a drive-in laundry in Venice, Rose and 3rd Avenue. I'll pick you up there, kid. Right away, Lou. Right away. How you feeling, kid? I'm scared, Lou. Yeah, I'll bet. How did I get into this, Lou? What happened? Why am I running away? Uh, Jeff, let's not... Let's not what? Let's not kid. Huh? Because I'm in this, too. That alibi I gave you. Oh, what do you mean, let's not kid, Lou? The way you pounced on the alibi, paying blackmail. Is that any way for an innocent... You're saying what, Lou? Come on, Jeff. You really think I killed her, don't you? Listen, Jeff, Janie and I were talking. And Janie I'm... thinks I killed her. Yeah. Yeah, she does, Jeff. You ask and I told you. Okay. Okay. What are we stopping for? This is where you're getting out. What are you talking about? Hey, what is this? Open the door, Marlo. That's the boy. Now, come on out. That's it. You can slide out, too, Mr. Foster. Sure. Sure. Lou. That's right. I told Mr. Anders I'd bring you here, kid. Look, I didn't kill her. I did a lot of things wrong, but I didn't... Just don't whimper, Jeff, huh? The old nerve, kid. Like sliding in on a big one. Like the thrill things, kid, huh? Like you and Karen. It wasn't like that. How was it, kid, huh? What was the formula? Flex a muscle and be polite. Brown eyes looking up at you in here. Take my coat. You must be cold. And let's have a beer and back to the beach. Ooh. Back to the beach. And after all of it, she was only kidding all the time. What did you strangle her for? The coat, Lou. How did you know about it? What? The coat. My coat I put on her. 
Uh, sure, the one she was drowning. There was no coat. I went back there after she'd been murdered. Took the coat from her and burned it. The same crazy reason I did everything wrong. How do you know about the coat, Lou? Now, look. Nobody this... knew about that coat but me. And whoever killed her. Then why did you come running to me for an alibi? I didn't, Lou. You suggested I ought to have one. You would be my alibi. That way you'd have one, too. What about it, Foster? <sighs> what can he say? Those phone calls. Call and hang up till Janie got on the line. Then let Janie listen to her in pain and calling out my name. Start suspicion right at home base. You really built it, didn't you? I, uh... We'd better go. I... Hey, don't shoot that, Foster! Stop! Hey! Hey, don't! Lou didn't die. He'll stand trial. Summer's fading and vacation's long over. But sometimes, sometimes on weekends, Janie drives me out to Point Doom. And we sit there. And we watch the sunset ride in on the long, slow curve of surf. And we don't talk. Suspense, presented by Autolite. Tonight's star, Mr. Tyrone Power. This is Harlow Wilcox again. If you're one of the 25 persons selected in the huge Autolite family charity drawing, you can name any recognized charity you wish to receive a big share of $100,000 in cash. Those charities can be schools, hospitals, churches, the mental health fund, or any other recognized charity. So if you're 18 years or over, visit any of the following Autolite family car dealer showrooms. DeSoto, Hudson, Plymouth, Studebaker, Dodge, Willis, Nash, Packard, Kaiser, or Chrysler. Print your name and address on the registration form and have the car dealer sign it. That's all. Nothing to buy, try, or solve. So help your favorite recognized charity share in this $100,000 total. Visit any Autolite Family car dealer showroom and sign up for the Autolite Family charity drawing tomorrow. Next week, a story based on fact, the dramatic report of a murderer and how he spent seven hours with a young lady before he killed her. It's called Somebody Help Me. Our star, Mr. Cornell Wilde. That's next week on... Suspense. Suspense is transcribed and directed by Elliot Lewis with music composed by Lucian Morrowick and conducted by Lud Bluskin. The Guilty Always Run was written for Suspense by Morton Fine and David Friedkin. In tonight's story, Kathy Lewis was heard as Janie and William Conrad as Lou. Featured in the cast were Charlotte Lawrence, Frank Nelson, and Jack Crucian. Tyrone Power may currently be seen in the 20th Century Fox picture, King of the Kyber Rifles, in Cinemascope and Technicolor. And remember next week, Mr. Cornell Wilde in Somebody Help Me. This is the CBS Radio Network.